By now, Charlemagne's campaigns had been going on for over a quarter of a century. The thing that enabled him to hold on to all the gains that he had made over this time and keep control over a rapidly expanding empire was his ability as an administrator. Throughout his lands, Charlemagne granted large land holdings called fiefs to local nobles and tribal military leaders in exchange for their loyalty. And he appointed Frankish aristocrats to the posts of counts or governors of a district which was called a county. Each political district had its parallel in a church district or diocese, headed by a bishop with similar authority in all matters related to the church. Every year, both counts and bishops attended a general assembly at Charlemagne's court, where they would advise the emperor and hear his directives. Charlemagne also reorganized the economy of his empire. In order to improve trade and commerce, he standardized tolls and customs dues, as well as weights and measures. He constructed roads and bridges, and even attempted the massive engineering feat of digging a canal between the Rhine and the Danube. He instituted important judicial and legal reforms and ordered the compilation and codification of the laws of many of the tribes he had conquered. In terms of the way Europe ran, he was very, very efficient um, in comparison to his predecessors. Now, with most medieval leaders, there's, a, there's something to learn about efficient rulers. Basically, if you want to get as much as you can out of the world around you, i.e. to gain as much money from it, as much clear support, you need to be quite efficient at running it. So those that, are, those that are strong leaders, those that are quite exploitative leaders, tend to be the ones that are most efficient as well. That's very true of Charlemagne. He was very keen to make his will felt um, around Europe. So he was keen to send out envoys, what we call missi, on a very regular basis. He was keen to make his proclamations known in documents. Just as important was the cultural revival he instituted, which became known as the Carolingian Renaissance. Charlemagne ordered bishops and abbots to set up schools for the training of monks and other clerics. Charlemagne also persuaded Alcuin of York and other leading scholars of the day to come to his court and establish a new library of pagan and Christian works. Soon the palace school became an active center of learning. Much of his motivation for this policy was practical as well as religious. Because the training was conducted in Latin, it promoted the standardization of a common written and spoken language in a huge empire which had many different languages and dialects. So what is really an achievement of Charlemagne is that he managed to transfer the ideas, the culture of late, of late antiquity, of Christian late antiquity, up to the Middle Ages, and that affected um, every part of, of, of culture, the literature, the sciences, and the law. He uh, did reforms in every uh, aspect of cultural life, and that's his one big achievement. Knowledge was all important to Charlemagne, so he became the most eager student of all. At a time when the only men of learning were the monks, here was a leader who was an intellectual and theologian, a ruler who changed the face of Europe both politically and culturally. Even during times of fighting, he continued to create centers for the arts to flourish, encouraging architecture, manuscript copying, bookbinding and gold and silversmith work. He built schools and he laid down strict rules for teachers and students.